In this video, we will discuss section 1.4, continuity and one-sided limits. So the definition of continuity is a function f is continuous at c when these three conditions are met. All three are met. One, f of c is defined. Two, the limit of f at c exists. And three, the limit of f at c is the value f of c. A function is continuous on an open interval a, b when the function is continuous at each point in the interval. A function is, that is continuous on negative infinity to infinity is called continuous everywhere or everywhere continuous. A function f is defined on i, an interval, except possibly at c and f is not continuous at c, then f is said to be discontinuous at c. Discontinuities, discontinuities fall under two categories, removable or non-removable. Basically, can I use algebra manipulation to remove it or not, okay? And graphically, um, these are the three, or four of the common cases that will happen in our graphs, okay? So if there is a hole, okay, that is a removable discontinuity. If there is a hole, but then the function is defined somewhere else, that is also a removable discontinuity, okay? And in both of these two cases, A and B, the limit exists. Okay, it's just here there's no value at C, and here there is a value at C, but it's not consistent with what you would get for the limit. So for this case, part one doesn't is, is broken, and for this case, it's part three that is broken. Okay, I do have it defined at C, and I do have a limit that exists. They're just not the same for this particular graph. For this one, I do have a limit, but one and three can't be true because one, I don't have a point at C, so F of C is not defined, therefore it can't possibly equal the limit, okay? Example C and D though are non-removable. Notice there's a break in the graph, okay? And this one is also non-removable. Again, a break in the graph, okay? And in both of these two cases, the limit does not exist. Here you have a limit up here, and here your limit is down here. They're not the same, therefore the whole limit doesn't exist. Here you have it going to infinity and infinity, and we had discussed that. We don't know if it's the same number or not, so therefore this limit does not exist. So these two, the limit does not exist, which is why they are non-removable. Here, the limits do exist, which is why those guys are removable. Now, theorem 2.10 is the existence of a limit. Let f be a function and let c and l be real numbers. The limit of f as x approaches c is l if and only if x approaches c from the left the little minus up there means from the left it means going in this direction toward your c and the limit as x approaches c with the plus sign means from the right which means you're going this direction toward your c value okay if both of those are the same and they equal l then the limit the complete limit of f is equal to l so we've always looked at the left side and the right side, it's just now we have notations for that. So if you have a little minus superscript, it means from the left side of C. If you have a little plus sign sub superscript, then it means from the right side of C. So if you're looking at a number line here, C, this would be from the left, this would be from the right. Um, now the definition of continuity on a closed interval. A function f is continuous on a closed interval, a, b, when 
f is continuous on the open interval a b and the limit as a as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a and the limit of f as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b so theorem 2.11 is the properties of continuity if b is a real number and f and g are continuous at x equal to c then the functions listed below are also continuous at x equal to c a scalar multiple b times f or b times g the sum or difference um, f plus g g plus f is the same f minus g g minus f all of those are also continuous the product f times g which is the same as g times f and the quotient f over g or g over f provided that your denominator of course does not equal zero otherwise the whole thing's undefined so theorem 2.12 is the continuity of composite functions so if g is a continuous at c and f is continuous at g of c then the composite function given by f of g of x is also continuous at c theorem 2.13 Intermediate value theorem, if f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and f of a does not equal f of b, and k is any number, any y value, between f of a and f of b, then there exists at least one number c in the interval a, b, such that f of c equals k. So we will see a lot more when it comes to this intermediate value theorem. Um, <clears throat> We'll be doing some examples, lots of examples. Well, maybe not lots, but a few examples pertaining to the intermediate value theorems.